always good to have our friends back on the show and putting a face with the name as uh, as we said yeah. before we came on john teague of the teague brothers band with us today and john good to visit with you brother hey what's up cameron thanks for having me man Always good to visit with you, and uh, I know we got a new single to talk about, got uh, some upcoming music, all kinds of stuff uh, going on. First off, let's talk about the I Found Trouble. Where where did this song come from for you, John? Man, um, I, I, I feel like uh, we, we try to do a good job live of making people dance, and, and this is just one of those dance tunes. The lyrics, I mean, are really just about a guy who's – falling heads over heels over this girl who is way out of his league, you know, and so, but he's going to make an effort, you know, and that's all we really can do, but she sticks around, you know, and that, that's really all it's about. Um, and just making it fun and easy to dance to. And, uh, the band really, you know, leaned into that. So the whole song is just super, makes you want to move, you know, that's it. Now, now, how has how's the songwriting been for you as of late? How is uh, how is that uh, now that you, now that getting out and play and has has that reinvigorated the songwriting process for you? Yeah, because the songs I was <laughs> the songs I was writing during the pandemic were not as like happy. <laughs> I can hardly it, imagine. <laughs> right? Yeah, it was kind of I was getting down on myself, and then I got COVID myself, and that was rough, and it whooped on me, and. Uh, but during my 12 days of having all this brain fog and all that, like on the way out of COVID, I just really just started hammering down. And uh, yeah, I've written another 10 songs besides the 10 we wrote last year. And uh, a couple of the songs on the new record uh, are songs we wrote in actually like 2020 or uh, 2019. But uh, they're, they've kind of circled around. They've made their way to finally a record. It's kind of funny how long it takes from the time you write one to the, for the time for you guys actually get to hear it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I have super invigorated. I've always been a nerd about songwriting. And, and uh, so I'm always writing. I mean, always, I was just writing before we got on the air. So yeah. Now, now what is, what is it that inspires you what is it that uh, in the day-to-day what is it just uh catching catching a word a phrase what is it that you're like ah i gotta sit down yeah yeah it's sometimes it's an interesting thing or it could be a melody uh that is like a lyrical melody that like the the whole i found trouble thing was the skip jump and bounce off a of fumble like that <laughs> just came to me one day jacking around and I was like you know that'd be kind of cool and I just cataloged it and then I came back and and put it to a whole chorus and then a whole song you know so I kind of built it around that chorus the whole song built around the chorus so that that's kind of the way I do it it's just it's it's yeah like you said it's like it's a molecule and then it just turns into a, a living creature by the time the producer and the band's done with it but yeah it's it's, it's just, that, that's how I do it. It's just a spark, like you said. But I get a lot of sparks. <laughs> <laughs> Too many sparks, man. <laughs> so, so how many song ideas do you have currently stored on your phone? About uh, 10 that were untouched, 20, uh, 20 total. 10 of those will be on another record. You know, we can kind of tell, like, that's a Teague Brothers song. And then it's like, (laughs) and then this is like, John, you're being a nerd song. You know, it's like, we have to balance it out. You know, the band helps check me. They're like, hey, man, that's a little too nerdy. You know, like, you, someone, it's, that's okay. That's the fun part about it is that I'm doing this totally organically. There's no like me in a room and somebody's brainstorming and telling me exactly what to say or think. And, uh, and all the co-writes I've done, they are all very similar. Every, the, the guys I've written with are like fun and want to do something weird or unique. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I, honestly, I, I get that from like the John Fulbrights and, and the Evan Felkers, the Hayes Carl, uh, Fred Eagle Smith, those, I, I love their approach. You know, they're definitely just doing whatever they want. I promise you. 
<laughs> now, how has your songwriting process evolved? Where did, where did this, the, the process start for you? And, and, and well, I guess you're a seasoned veteran now, but what, what are your goals long-term songwriting wise? Um, you know, I don't know. I, honestly, I, I try to, I do a lot of the songwriting cause it's fun and all that, but really I live for the live show. Um, so hopefully they all ultimately end up in some live setting and rocking the place. And that's, that's, that's where I'd like them all to be eventually. Um, or on a really good record, um, um, or, you know, or produced well, you know, that's kind of, I did a lot of like unproduced records before I really started making good records and those are all, no one even knows or talks about that, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, that's, I always hope that that's where they end up. Just they're presented. Well, my goal in songwriting, like long-term would be like, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Maybe make a lot of money. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good, that'd be a good start, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and that would be cool. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, it's so hung up in me. Dude, I mean, it's my whole life since I was a little kid writing short stories by hand on yellow tablature. Like, and then I, that went all the way up to me doing rap songs as a middle schooler. And then in high school writing heavy metal and rock songs and then i toured as a as a metal artist for a while i was the lead singer in a metal band it's crazy but uh before i joined the military and then so I've, I've just been songwriting my whole life like literally all the way up until i heard whiskey myers the turnpike troubadours that's whenever i was like okay country music i can get into this i was I'm totally against it uh, I, used to, I remember I told my wife whenever we first got married, I'm like, you'll never catch me in a pair of cowboy boots. You know? <laughs> this was before I went to Iraq. And then in Iraq and then, you know, wanting to be home and like I connected with country music because it's more real, you know, it's like more tangible things that they sing about and not necessarily all these conceptual things that metal and rock music tends to sing about. So that's, I just fell in love with that. Yeah. So the, the Texas music scene kind of fits perfectly with a, a little bit of an edginess to it, a little bit of rockabilly in there as well. So how, how do you meld the, the loves of music of your life into your sound? Um, man, I like that dopamine hit really. Uh, <laughs> I, I chase that, you know, I, we, we call it a vibe, you know, uh, we chase it we pursue it actively as a band i do it as a lyricist already and I, I do a lot of the musical melody on my own so yeah I, I, that's really what I, my uh, what i'm shooting for when i'm sitting down you know and, and like what i try to implement into every song is like how do i turn that phrase that really just make, makes you melt a little bit and and makes sense you know phonetically and lyrically um but man, my real life experiences are really just feed all of that. I, all the songs I write have some sort of like real life, you know, basis or feeling or emotion or experience, you know, whatever I went through or somebody I know went through, or sometimes it's a folk story, like a folk tale that we hear around like Southeast Texas. There's a lot of Southeast Texas in my stuff, <laughs> rice and cows and rainbow bridges and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, now, who has been the biggest inspiration songwriting wise? Who has maybe helped you shape that songwriting ability? Um, probably number one, number one and two is my mom and dad. Both of them were really accomplished songwriters. And uh, my mom was a bluegrass singer songwriter. So she's super talented. Uh, she play, she's one of those multi-instrumentalists, sings like an angel um but back in the 80s it was really hard for a woman to get break out in the country but and she had two kids at home so she went came home from nashville and raised us instead of something thankful for appreciate that <laughs> but so it's kind of embedded in me that way but uh my, my dad also is a honky tonk guy so i have like this like this he was big on the live show and presentation and all that so those two 
really kind of built me into who I am, like as, you know, made me want to do something that's tasteful and sounds good presented. But, uh, you know, beyond that, you know, I like Evan, Evan Felker and uh, like some of those, uh, Robert Earl Keane, you know, those guys, I feel like I just, I just pray one day I'm as good as them or, or they, they at least tip the hat to me one day. I don't know. You know, that's what you always, as a songwriter, those are the guys to me, you know? So. Now you, we, we talked about uh, upcoming album. What's uh, what, what's time frame on the, the release and, uh, and, and how much, I think you said you still had almost a, an album worth of material still in the, in the coffers too. I did. Uh, we, this, this record is done. We finished it in August. Um, so I found Trouble is the first of that record. And it's a 10 song full length album that's gonna take you on a roller coaster of of sounds and and uh and ideas and and stories. I can't wait. <laughs> Man, I'm totally totally excited about it. Uh as far as timing, I think that it's gonna be a slow release. That's kind of the way things are these days. You know, like I want radio. I want y'all to have it for a while and and uh, have the time that y'all need with it. And I learned to like you kind of plant the seed, let it bloom a little bit, and bloom a little bit more. I learned over the years, you know, releasing the last couple of, or the re last record and a half, you know, what kind of works for us as a band, how we release things. And uh, so, yeah, I would be looking at probably another single in March or something that maybe not as radio friendly because I do have a potty mouth sometimes. <laughs> Say so that one. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I probably have around March, have another one drop and then hopefully full album before the end of summer. You know, it's really hard to say, cause it's got to build this, you got to build a team to release stuff. So like it starts with the radio promotion then you got a publicist, then you've got, you know, distribution and uh, management. I mean, there's just a, and agents and tour booking. It's just, just so much that goes into it before I can say, Hey, Cameron, on this day, be looking. <laughs> so, but I would say somewhere around summertime, that's what we're shooting for. Now, how much has, has the mentality of the business changed for you? You talked about, uh, you, you know, you <laughs> always used to, you always used to think about the album coming out. Then you start getting singles off the album, but, but now you're not the first time I've heard, you, you know, getting sell, singles, getting the stuff growing, leading up to the release. How, right. how has that changed from when you first began? Dude. Cause when you finish that first record, like when we finished harvest day, I was like, Let's get it out right now. I'm so excited. You know, we have this whole thing and then everyone's like telling me, pull the reins back, pull the reins back. Well, we didn't because we didn't have anything. So, and so from the beginning now, you know, that once I got that out of the way, I got that off me and I realized like, Oh yeah, these people were pretty, they were actually right. Like I should have held up and shot this to the right distribution company and, you know, they were right about it, but at the same time, you know, as an artist, I just felt like we needed content. And so, so day one, me, that's, that's what I was thinking. Now it's like, okay, we got plenty of content. Like let's give them this one and see how it does. Give them this one, let them, you know, just let it grow over time. Cause on top of that, we got music videos, we've got to shoot, you know, there's just so much, you really do need to have a full tank before you drop the whole thing. <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of take the airplane approach where like the plane's got to be up in the air and be full of fuel before you can drop a bomb. You know, you, you can't just, you know, fly halfway and drop a bomb where you don't want it. You want to be in the right place when you drop it. So, and once it's dropped, it's gone. It's, there's no getting it back. You can't put it back and say, Oh no, no, wait. You know? So that's why it's important. And I would encourage all artists to do the same, you know, take your time. It's, I know it's exciting. It's always going to be exciting. Even in three albums in, you're going to be excited, but if you do it right, pace yourself and then it'll let the life of that album for a lot longer. You know, we've gone almost two years of the full length record because we, we started doing it the right way, you know? 
So, and, yeah. and how, how hard is it to, to take those lumps and be like, okay, yeah, we learned we'll, we'll do it different next time around. Or are you hard headed enough like me that you're like, we're going to just keep on doing it the way I say, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, even I found trouble, like we're kind of in talks with a management company out of Nashville and they were kind of like, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like this, uh, this is way overdue. Like, you don't understand, like we're going into the new year and I need, so I want the radio to have something. It's what I've done for the last two years. I'm not going to change that because you're considering us. You know what I mean? It's like, right. I would rather be like, if, if, he, if they would have signed us and been like, all right, we're going to, we're, we're pulling it. And they had a really good reason not to say that. All right. But, you know, since I'm still pretty much in control right now, we're doing what we're doing it my way. So <laughs> you guys got the song, you know, so that's kind of how it went. This one is kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just stubborn enough to, we're going to do it. Whatever we got to do. You know. <laughs> well, uh, John, if folks want to find uh, the, the new single, obviously uh, they can call into country radio request that. Uh, but also uh, if they want to find uh, more info about the upcoming releases, tour dates, uh, social media, merchandise, all of that stuff. Where's, where's the best place for folks to keep up with Teague Brothers Band? Man, all our socials are, are pretty hot, and I'm on them every day and jacking with people and everything, <laughs> uh, <laughs> posting pictures and stuff, so I try to stay on it. Uh, but our website's like kind of a hub where you can go everywhere. So teaguebrothersband.com. And then if you go to the tour, there's all our tour dates and tickets are always posted and all that. Um, and beyond that, um, like I said, the socials, Spotify is, I mean, we're all over Spotify. That seems to just be the hot, hot bed now. I just, everyone right. just goes there. I mean, no disrespect to radio. Can't <laughs> yeah. I'm just, no, I, I sense that <laughs> you guys oftentimes lead people to Spotify. That's just kind of the way it works. But y'all also lead people to my show. So I need y'all. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. Well, uh, check him out online. Uh, find his music in whichever venue you partici participate in yourself. And uh, again, John, it's been great to visit with you today, yeah. brother. I, uh, It's good to see you face to face today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kim. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man, for sure. Well, John, always good to visit with you and uh, look forward to catching up again real soon. For sure, man. Stay in touch. <laughs>